commissione del popolo deve avere il suo rapporto, colonnello Der. Der bericht è wichtig, größter Eier. Capitaine Der, nos félicitations. Le besoin d'un rapport comprehensif, nous voudrions attirer l'attention des Nations Unies. Extraordinary attention of the United Nations, the heroism of Major Pierre Lafayette. The pilot Captain Hank Holden will file his report immediately to you, Colonel Der. Let us have a full update soonest. We have work to do. The message is loud and clear, Colonel Dare. A full report, and the PM asked me to tell you, well done. So, full citrep, evaluation, everything. Do my best, Sir Hubert. Dan Dare. Pilot of the future. Dramatized for radio in four parts by Nick McCarty. Part one, disaster. Tape coded AK-37RBG-1. This is the official log and report of the Ranger mission... All sources will be identified by code and a full list of sources will be attached. Crew will identify themselves. Henry Brennan Hogan, pilot captain, born in Houston, trained photographer, racing driver and navigator, USAF, seconded to the mission out of a secret base somewhere in the British Isles. Pilot Major Pierre Auguste Lafayette, analytical mathematician, three-dimensional physics, French space service. Spaceman, class one, Albert Digg, do I have to use my full name, sir? Sorry. Albert Fitzwilliam Digby, born Wigan, married, volunteered Ranger Mission. I hate these gadgets, sir. Dare, Daniel, Colonel, British European Space Service, leader. Professor Peabody did not submit an ident tape at this time. We will insert it when it arrives. The report will contain all relevant material. I will interrupt the flow for matters of clarification. It began in the early spring. Here at the space launch site, tension rises. The hopes of the Kingfisher crew and of their families and comrades, indeed of the whole world, depend on success. Earlier today, I managed to snatch an interview with Colonel Dare, who's overseeing launch preparations. We all know that the hopes of the world ride on the Kingfisher. Success means that the world will be able to feed its teeming millions. <laughs> Next, background tape logged at A47BK1. The agronomists, economists and the other experts are predicting worldwide famine if no new cultivable areas are found out in deep space. Failure will mean disaster. The countdown continues. 60, 50, 50, Kingfisher, Kingfisher, do you hear us? Over. Well, loud and clear, control. We're ready to go. Chase complete. We are ready and counting. All systems green. Ready to go, Sir Hubert. Wish her luck. This is it. Goodbye, Kingfisher. Best of luck. Thank you. We have lift off, gentlemen. Hey! You wanted to go down. Promise me one thing, Sir Hubert. If they fail, for whatever the reason, promise me I go on the next probe. It must not fail. We can't afford another failure. A week later, Digby was serving up my breakfast. Shall I turn the ticker news off, sir? Breakfast is ready. Good chap. Don't tell me bacon, eggs, hot toast. Eh, no, but them vitamin blocks again. Eh. Queer do, isn't it, sir? Vitamin blocks. I tell you, my Auntie Anastasia has had 40 fits of... She'll shooting. be having them too, Digby. Eh, sir, not up in Lancashire. Still a few pigs hidden in the back, no doubt. And a few hens left a lane. I could ask her to send it, doesn't it? No, thank you, Digby. I'd rather not know about your formidable aunt's black market activities. Uh. Just thought it happened to cheer you up, sir. You've had a face like Fulton since Kingfisher left. Mm. No one's been to Venus before, have they, sir? Digby! Colonel Dare's residence, he's Colonel just... Colonel Dare to report to headquarters immediately. My Colonel cap, Dare Digby! Hurry, man, get the jeep jet! I don't know what the hurry is, I'm sure. At any moment, Kingfisher will be arriving at the point where the other ships disappear, Digby. So step on it! Kingfisher bearing ZN76 AL34. Cross bearing from Moonfix XC51 MT. We had our first view of the Kingfisher from the external orbiting cameras. She looked in good shape. 
Give me voice contact with Captain Crane. I can hear him, but we can't seem to get through to him, sir. Switch from headphone to speaker contact. This is the critical time. We have a firm bearing, Captain Crane. Good. Three hours to touchdown. Just approaching the dead zone, sir. Dead zone? What the lads call it, sir. Sort of graveyard, sir. We'll be through it in ten parsecs. What the... What's that? Check vents. Check all systems. Impulse cylinders, sir. Impulse cylinders. I have no power. My controls are dead, sir. All crew, all crew, hear this, hear this. Impulse cylinders gone. Stop jets. Seal five, seven, and eight bulkheads. Break out emergency oxygen and pressure suits. Fire, sir! Fire! Kingfisher's mission ended there, in the graveyard three hours from Venus. The usual emergency meetings happened, of course. I was piloting the jeep jet to the first of them when the beginnings of an idea struck me. Ironical, it seems to me, sir. Really, Digby? Step on it, Dan. Sir? Yeah, I'm hastily kept waiting. A world government ends wars, doctors get all the diseases taped, poverty's more or less gone, everything in the garden's lovely, except... There's nought to eat in it. Well, it's bound to happen. Population doubles and redoubles, takes up farming land. What's left has been exhausted by bad farming. Can't grow enough food and so chaos. That's why Venus was so important. Possible farming land. I think I know what happened to Kingfisher, sir. Huh? This new class of ship works off impulse wave engines. So? These waves bounced off the moon are picked up by the in-flight airships. Yeah. Picked up by the cylinders. Well gone. Say a shield were erected to prevent those rays getting to the ship. Well, they wouldn't have a chance. But who... How? Where? Don't know until we go and see. Do I, Sir Hubert? Go, Dan. Go, Sir Hubert. We have a plan, Prime Minister. We need money and manpower and we need permission. And courage. Oh, very well. Carry on, gentlemen. Well, no need to wait on ceremony. Carry on. Old-fashioned rocket ships. Rockets went out with the ark, Sir Hubert. Dreadful things. Build one soonest, understand? And three two-man shuttles to Colonel Dare's design. It's important it has no impulse methodology. No impulse? Mad, Colonel. Rebuild one of the early models. Down here at Space HQ, there is a scene of frantic activity as Colonel Dare supervises the rebuilding of a spaceship that seems to have come from the old museum in London. This may be the last hope for the world. There have been riots in Jakarta and on the western seaboard of America. A news we blackout... We are running out of time! She's ready for testing. Three months from start to finish. I hear you got a new crew joining. <laughs> Is there no way to keep a secret here? <laughs> Not about the Ranger. No, sir. She is a beauty. A beauty, Sir Hubert. I trained on one of these shuttles, oh, way back. You want to give the personal <coughs> rocket vehicle a trial run? <laughs> I cleared it with control. Ignition. Adjust the throttle. And away we go. Tally ho! Meanwhile, in the control tower. Well, I'll be gall darn if I ever saw anything like that outside a Houston museum. Man, amazing. I've never in my life to think men risk their lives in such burn shakers. You two for <laughs> Colonel Dare? That's right. He around? He must be laughing fit to bust seeing that old crate doing a fly past. Uh, up in he might. He'll see you on the landing area. Jump on jets! That crate landed! I have a nasty feeling, my friend. You know this day? Flown with him. Hell of a pilot. Hell of a good pilot. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Dan! What are you doing in that thing? Flying it, Hank. I have a very nasty feeling. What gives, Dan? I explained everything to them, and... Venus? No chance! Off your little trolleys, boys. A suicide ride. I promised my little wife no trouble. 
No adventures, no risk, no insurance. Your wife? Second wife. You'd like her, Dan. Hold on, I got a couple of three Ds. I have more important things to think about, Hank, than wives. You coming to Venus or not? Of course he will come. We are honored. Thank you, Pierre. Hank? She'll never forgive you. Okay. We waited in the mess for the last member of the party. Professor Peabody is usually on time, I understand. Hmm. Some bumbling old daughter. Remember that trip we did to Alpha Mega Sorry, Dan, when we took that prof along? He was a damn nuisance. Well, I'm assured by personnel that the professor comes with the highest of recommendations. Sir Hewitt, Colonel Dare. Professor Peabody reporting rather late. Sorry. Had to hand over a rather oh, complex woman? experiment on atmospheric Pass. pollution and oh, pollen yeah. counts to an assistant. I say. Gentlemen, you want a geologist, botanist, and agriculturalist. I am all those. You wish to check my credentials? Uh, no. Uh, merci, mademoiselle. It is uh, that we are discussing a dangerous, uh, near enough, suicidal flight, and we had no thoughts of women on such a mission. Uh, we are sure you are a good scientist. Women in space. Damn it all. The PM's private line. I am also a qualified space pilot. Uh, what do you do in your spare time, Pro? I'm a world expert on orchids. Oh. Prime Minister, Professor Peabody has just arrived. We... Uh, an order from the cabinet... Yes, 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 sir, of course, sir. Women. Ah. A week later, we were ready to leave for the planet Venus. Systems locked. Hank, okay? Seven, four, Tape three, recording. zero and holding. Hi, Colonel. All going well. Basic check's nearly done. Pierre? All doors and hatches Check sealed. Observers one. regretted. Takeoff procedures counting down. Run on, chefs. Where's the professor? <laughs> Telling Sir Hubert some home truth. I flatly refuse. Oh, I'm younger, I am fitter, and I have been flying more recently, Sir Hubert. Your flying log is, if you want the truth, out of date. It can't be. I checked your accreditation. You know the rules, sir. I fly the shuttle when the time comes. Places for takeoff. Places for takeoff. Places for takeoff. Check all systems. All off hold. All systems go. Retroactors in place. Seven, four, activated. Good luck. left planet Earth on the 15th of July and three weeks later were approaching what had become known as the Graveyard. Each dead ship had left a transponder giving out its call sign to be picked up by any approaching craft. We were kitted up in our space exploration suits and ready to get away from the orbiting mother craft in the space shuttles. Look all right, do I, sir? That parachute doesn't do much for your figure, Dig, but you'll do. You sure you could handle the shuttle, mister? Oh, no, sir. Rocket Shuttle 4, Peabody and Sir Hubert, ready. Thank you, Professor. Number 3, Lafayette and Ogan, ready to go. Thank you, Pierre. Ranger, we're leaving you now. Good luck, everyone. We approached what was left of Kingfisher. It lay about 50 parsecs to 15 degrees of our course. A mass of twisted tubes, buckled metal plates, lying like a great whale in the huge wheel of space. The plan was simple, direct, and required only cold nerve, courage, and heroism. It was not something any Frenchman would have turned away from, of course. Colonel Dare insisted that he should be the one to take the first risk, to go through the shield. It was a bit warm in the shuttle as the Colonel put his foot down. I thought then, I thought, up and my auntie would have a bit of a turn if you could see me now. E, our Arthur, she'd say, E. By Yaki Thump. Near the danger zone now, Dig. Three and four, this is your leader. We're going in now. It was all going well. Past the hulk of Kingfisher and leaving her transponders behind. The radio, sir. Blown up. I should have remembered. The radio works on impulse waves. We can't even warn the others. There's fire, sir. And the plates all down one side are buckled and straining. Hold on, Dick. Hold on. <laughs> sir, atmosphere warning. We've hit the air around Venus, sir. Yippee, we can bail out of the old Keitel hole together while we slow down. We 
seem to be in a spot of trouble at this time. Four to command ship. Colonel Dare has a malfunction. Over. Hey, Dan. Come in, Dan. Sir Hubert to Major Lafayette. Hold your station. Sit rep soonest. Oh, do me so damn stiff up a lip about it. He's out of control. Come there. Come in, please. Come in. Come there. Come in. Tell that old stuff shirt we're going in after. That old stuff shirt will tell you when and if you do anything. Repeat. Hold your station. Seem to be on fire again, sir. Up and we're in a spot of bother. Got a tonic, Digby. Anyone tell you? Ah, my auntie once said... Later. If that fire reaches us, we're dead anyway. Fasten helmets. You ready to abandon ship? Right, sir. Got your PG pistol, sir. No time to pack anything else, sir. Here it goes. Jump, Digby! Suspended from our parachutes, we activated our personal black boxes so that everything would be recorded. Speech, physical condition, and ambient sounds. Grand. Venus at last. No ship, no radio, no food, no doubt. Why I ever joined the space fleet, I'll never know. I lost sight of Digby as he drifted towards the craggy mountains to the west. I was coming in too fast, thinner atmosphere. Directly below was a lake. Get rid of the shoot. Quick, quick. Here we go. Here we go. Water. Felt like water. Looked like... like purple soup. And fish. So it sustained life. That was something. Oh, boy. Oh, will you look at... Trouble. It's a... A huge sludge green sea monster. It's it's us. No! Meanwhile, Pierre, this is very dangerous. We knew the danger when we volunteered, so you bet. There has been no contact. We must go into the zone. He's not going to let us. The old... Ten minutes, Pierre. You have ten minutes and then we will follow. Keep radio channels open at all times. Adam, boy! Here comes the cavalry. Rockets on maximum check. On a go. What's he singing, Sir Hubert? An old song, Miss Peabody. A French rallying cry. An anthem, they used to call it. What? Pierre. Come in, Pierre. I stopped just before entering the zone. I knew suddenly what the problem was. The radio, Hank! What? Help me! What the hell are you doing? We need the radio, for heaven's sake, man! It will kill us! It works off impulse rays, just like the new ships. We have to jettison it. Good man! Oh, you're an old rattler, you are. A real genius. You better warn Sir Hubert. Where are you? Here! Yeah. Ship three to the control. Over. Where the the radio, sir. The radio works off impulse rays. We have to remove it before we go through the barrier. Over. Oh, well done, Pierre. Very good. Jet is from the radio and good luck. We will follow you down. Out. Meanwhile. Hey, that were a right welcome for Colonel Dare and no mistake. Up the top of a cliff and looking out, I could see and I could hear. Why, it were chilling that noise. Nasty, messy place, Venus. Funny water. The colour of me Auntie Anastasia's favourite antimacassar. Like mud at Wigan on a wet day. Captain Dare was out there in the middle of the lake, giving that thing a right hammering. No way to welcome guests, you... you refugee from Loch Ness. I'll have to put you to sleep, old friend. Thank heaven Dick remembered the paralyzing pistol. Now, get ashore and sort out the mess. Sir! Sir! Are you all right, sir? Fine, Dick. How about you? Oh, uh, better middling, sir. Oh, bit of a nasty go out there, sir. Oh, I don't see any bus stops, sir. No snack bars, for that matter. Nor any What next? Is that what you mean? In a word, sir, yes. We had an RV planned if one of the other ships got through. Oh, I see, sir. Great, sir. 
And how do we get to this RV? The coordinates are locked into the infrared compass, all ready to go. All we have to do is follow the bearings. Oh, uh, across the lake? Is that all, sir? Crossing the lake was easy. We built a small raft, set up a chute, a sail, and as the prevailing wind seemed to be in our favour, it took little time to cross the purple lake. Not a sign of our antediluve, our old friend neither. Time for should die? Trust you, dig a completely unexplored planet, and what do you do? Go to sleep. I'm conserving energy, as it happens. Eventually we arrived on the far side of the lake. The atmosphere was dangerous, but we were breathing through the intake converters in our helmets. We had removed our spacesuits. And ho, oh, we're there. Strange, towering cliff and pillars of shining red stone. Caves and terraces of black basaltic rocks carved by millions of years of sea and wind action. Shanks' pony now, Dick. I don't like the look of this gully, sir. Now them boulders up there. Look out, sir! You think we want it here, sir? Just keep an eye open. Uh, yes, sir. We climbed through the rocks and away from the lake until... Look at that, sir. It's carved, sir. A huge pillar. Never natural light, Colonel. And look... There's a cave behind you, sir. Like it was a gateway or something. We'll take a look, Dick. Careful now. You ever get the feeling that you're being watched? Like eyes all over the... Shush, Dick. Look at these. Shine the torch here. You see? Marks. Paintings, Dick. The work of intelligent beings. You see this one here? It looks very like a man. And, and this... Very much like ancient Egyptian art, Dick. Dick? Digby! Don't look now, sir. But I think we've been followed by what looked like a bunch of overgrown blue bottles. There were maybe 20 of them. Tall, humanoid, blue-skinned. They wore helmets over bulging foreheads, long yellow skirts and breastplates that looked like silver and gold. For a moment, nothing moved. They were crouched behind their gun shields. I'll check him out, sir. Don't shoot, Dig. I'll talk to them. Don't be daft, sir. Talk to a bunch of heathens. It'll be famous last words, sir. They won't even appreciate Stop that thing. Keep me covered. Nathan! Oh, you murderous butcher! I'll get you for that. Here goes! Ah, that showed him. Colonel? Colonel Dick! I'm all right, Digby. Just stunned. We looked over at the figures paralysed by Digby. They were virtually human. But I saw no point in waiting to do further research on these hostile blue men. We walked out of the caves and saw across the valley a vast transporter. It was lit by strobing lights and little winking bulbs. Wow! Like Blackpool, South Shore, when I was a kiddie. And we walked right into the trap. Look out, Digby, behind you hey, on the ledge! Oh, hey, hey, get off, you great blue horror! Get off, sir! Give up, Dig! Hey, Don't fight hey, it out, number! We were marched across the valley to the flashing transporter. They stuck us on top. It climbed to a great cliff and then turned on full power and it straight for the purple lake. What happens if the brakes fail, sir? Hang on. It had taken us hours to cross the lake. It took the Venusian machine less than 20 Earth minutes to speed over the surface. We arrived at a vast ramp leading to huge green and yellow pillars. Domes glinted under the watery light of the sun. The whole city, for it was a city, hummed. The blue men took us under guard into a huge inner chamber and ripped our breathing helmets from our heads. <laughs> can't breathe. By heck, sir. We can, sir. It's air, sir. Tendon Glotton, I agree. Good, you're right, Digby. The air must have fooled our three. testers. Three. Three. Colonel, sir. Three. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Three. We saw a tall figure that at first looked not unlike a man. But the face was that of a reptile. Green. The eyes cold as ice, black as a shark's and with as little feeling in them. The mouth tight, thin, 
cruel. Wonder if he knows Morse. I never took Venusian at school. Colonel Dare. Spaceman Digby, I presume. How on earth do you speak English? We have studied the Earth for 26,000 years. Every dream child knows all its languages. We have humans to check with. The blue men came from Earth thousands of years ago. An experiment. Now, turn round. We have something to show you. Behind us, on a large stand, was a three-dimensional screen. Held in the middle of the screen, Pierre's space shuttle, just on the edge of the danger zone. Hank, let's hope we are right about the radio. You ready, my friend? Go for it, Major. Good luck and happy landings, Pierre. Well done. We have a welcome for you. First, you can watch your friends die. They won't die. They're not going to hit your ray shield. They don't have to. They are heading for the Flame Lands. Flame Lands? Our planet is divided into two by a molten belt round the equator. For centuries, we have had little contact with the South. Your friends are heading for the molten belt. I'm sorry. My fault, old friends. Interesting. No fear. Yet you have not yet conquered pity. We waste time. You will be sent by Electrosender to Mekonta, our capital city, for your special welcome. Dan Dare, pilot of the future, dramatized for radio in four parts by Nick McCarty. Mick Ford was Dan Dare, Terence Alexander, Sir Hubert, Donald G. Digby, Zela Clark, Professor Peabody, William Roberts, Hank, and Sean Barrett, Pierre. Other parts were played by Paul Downing, Christopher Good, John Moffat, Ben Onwukwe, Dale Rapley, Charles Simpson, and Simon Treves. Music was composed and played by Wilfredo Acosta. Technical presentation by Wilfredo Acosta with Michael Etherden and Colin Guthrie. Dan Dare is directed by Glyn Dearman.